my name is Kathy Bissell. Welcome to the Golf Show 2.0. This week, we're going to introduce you to a different kind of a golf club. Gary, would you do the introductions, please? Well, the older generation like us may remember the old Friars Club, which was a TV roast of Milton Berle or Dean Martin or somebody. This is not that Friars Club. This is the Friars Golf Club. It's a bunch of like-minded guys who love golf, and you join and they take trips all over the place. You won't believe the 2024 lineup. Uh, the big thing is you uh, you pay a fee and you have to follow their Ten Commandments. And number one is, besides not talking about Fight Club, <laughs> is uh, the the no bozo rule, which we'll use that word. Yes. I'm not sure who vets that, but Jeff Renzulli and Don Bostic of the club are going to explain that to us. So welcome, guys. And uh, Don, why don't you tell us about what this club is and who's in it? Sure. Well, I think, I mean, you did a, you did a good job. This is our, our 30th anniversary. So wow. it's a, it's a concept that I think is a little bit more popular in the UK, which would be, you know, golf club without a golf course. Uh, but to my knowledge, we're the first uh, here in the States. Um, and really, it's just a, you know, it's a community of just golf sickos, for lack of a better uh, term. <laughs> I mean, we, we all love the game for different reasons. Some of some we have some highly competitive golfers in our club, some professional golfers, and we have a lot of 30 plus handicaps. We have architecture nerds. We have people that are just looking to, you know, check bucket list, you know, destinations, which we provide. Um, you know, I think we, we can provide, you know. We travel to the world's best golf courses, but really what we're about is connecting people. Um, you know, I think Jeff said it best when, you know, you're, you, there's the, the guy that you may play, the guy or gal that you may play with in your next foursome on a Friars event uh, might be your best friend and you just don't know it yet because you, you, you <laughs> we, all, we all speak the same language. And if we can get together and kind of level the playing field and nobody takes themselves too seriously, i.e. the no asshole rule, we can create some magic and create create some memories. So that's that's really what we're about. Well, I like I like you said sickos. I would have probably said addict. Go we're golf addicts, but uh, sure. I don't know. There's probably a better word, Jeff. What else you got? What you got well, a be better word than addict? Um, just passionate about golf, travel, and people. How about that? Uh, I think the interesting thing that we seem to see is that people struggle to find community in their in their country clubs, even, even in their, and where they live with their neighbors. And, uh, you show up here and you feel like you're home. You're almost like at your college where you guys all speak the same language. You all root for the same team. You have a great time. And, uh, then you connect off the golf course. Uh, and it, it's just, it's just a different kind of experience. And I think that's what people are looking for today. And that's why so many of these golf clubs have sprouted up and are successful. And we, We'd love all of them because I think they they build community in golf, which is great. It's basically an online global country club of aficionados or whatever the word is, like ourselves, who, look, if I had time, I would try to play all 15,000 courses in America and the other 15,000 around <laughs> the rest of the world. But I'd like you guys have winning it down to the important ones. So, yeah, I'm probably not going to get on uh sand hills or sand valley by myself but you guys may have an outing there so r briefly run us through one of you guys uh let's say joe Shlobotnik calls you up and says i i want to join the friars club how, what's it cost how do i get in and where are we going to play sure well again we you know with the uh we only have one rule we also don't have any type of extensive you know there's no background search no credit check no drug test um, <laughs> if there if there was you know we, we might have a much smaller membership base <laughs> if, really, you're you know, gun owner, if you're a gun owner you're automatically in right right uh, i would say you know over 80 percent of our members are members of private clubs themselves and that obviously adds some value to our membership but it is not a requirement at all. Um, so I think, you know, the, the thought process is everybody gets a chance. You know, everybody, everybody's welcome. Everybody can come and play as long as they, you know, conduct themselves the way they're, they're supposed to and let everybody else have fun in the way they like to have fun, then you're welcome back. 
Um, you know, as far as you asked about some of the, you know, some of the events or some one of the or the costs, actually, I'm sorry you asked about. So it's fifteen hundred dollars to join and it's one hundred and fifty dollars a year. So, you know, one hundred and fifty dollars for, for less than the cost of one round. You know, you get access to over 40 events a year and our database. You know, you get access to the other 800 Friars members. Um, so, you know, I know obviously you travel a lot for your job, but if, if you travel around and you give us a heads up that you're going to be in South Florida in a month, well, we can make some connections with, with folks and set you up to play some of their clubs, which is, you know, very valuable. Um, so that's, that's, really valuable. What, that's what it's about. Yeah. I, I think this is something my dad would have loved if he were still alive. And if the internet had been invented when he was in his prime, he was a low digit handicap golfer. And the story on him is that my mother never knew about the third set of clubs. <laughs> she didn't find out until he was about 75. <laughs> he had one in the office, one of the club, and then there was this mystery other set. So mm. he was, he was really an avid, avid golfer. Well, it yeah, sounds like falls yeah, under one the, of us. That falls yeah. under the category I mentioned earlier about earlier about don't talk about fight club. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So really, really, the Friars is a travel group, and I'm, you know, you're gonna, I'm going to try if if I sign up, I'm gonna go on these trips with the same bunch of guys, uh, to all these. And the trip is organized for me. I just pay my money for whatever it is, whatever the fee is for that trip, and I show up and I have golf, and I, I'm gonna get to know some of these guys rather than having to do it myself. But I have the the community that I already know has been vetted for the you know what rule. <laughs> and it's going to be a good time. I mean, I, I that makes so much sense. <laughs> yeah, you know, a typical yeah, trip. You know, we we get together, and you know, obviously there's a cocktail party and a dinner on the first night. You know, where we kind of we we introduce slash embarrass all the all the new members, and we recognize <laughs> we recognize some of the you know dignitaries within the group, and you know some jokes are told, and and really just just try to kind of keep it light. There's a, there's a competition during every event, but it's it's kind of tertiary. I mean, you might throw we might throw twenty bucks into it, and it's run as close to you know to the USGA rules as we like. Uh, although we, <laughs> we 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 certainly have a mulligan off the first hole, and we don't play at, out of bounds. We, we we don't believe in that rule. Um, really, it's about having fun, playing fast, and you know getting back to the bar afterwards is kind of what I try to tell. <laughs> People. You believe in long putters, um, but you know, and then obviously, we, oh yeah, I, I don't care what kind of putter gadgets, we, gad, any gadget you have, we we support. It's important. So, yes, it's important. right. And just more more fodder to make fun of you if you show up okay. with you know, a swing shirt or something like that. Go for yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> the important thing about that mulligan, uh, I was reading your rules. Uh, if you elect to take a mulligan, you can, but if you do, you have to play it. None That's of this. Right. Yeah. I'll hit a small bucket of balls and pick one I like, or I'll, I like this one, you know, that precludes a guy hitting one. He just wants to get another swing in, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep it moving. Pace of play uh, is paramount to your group from what I read. A hundred percent. And then obviously, you know, we kind of wrap things up on the final evening with kind of an awards dinner. And so, you know, that's kind of the flow of a typical event. And it's uh, but it's, it's really just trying to create, you know, you know, they're, introduce the new folks, you know, to some, some of our traditions and just create some camaraderie and, you know, continuity, you know, we, I think Jeff and I have each been on over a hundred of these trips and really you, wow. they kind of, they start to blend together, but it's really like kind of a, you know, like a history book, so to speak, you know, you remember when this guy did this or, you know, this okay. crazy shot or this story and, and you could, you could be a part of that story by joining our club. It sounds like each trip could be a small documentary of some kind, <laughs> or at least yeah. a mockumentary. <laughs> sure, no, we, we've seen some some funny things, that's for sure. What's we've up? lost Jeff. We lost I'm, Jeff. He I'm sure out. we'll get him back, but well, okay. John, I was looking at one of the leaderboards uh, for upcoming event that you have, and mm -hmm. nobody's played yet, of course. And obviously the names are listed alphabetically, but uh, your name is on top of the leaderboard right now, Don, because it's you're 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 tied to the lead. <laughs> well, b before the first stroke is hit, I guess you know I might have a chance to win. But I mean, again, we I, we 
everybody can be a part of the club for whatever they want to be. And there are folks that are serious about their golf game and that, you know, want to count their strokes up and, and see who the best player is. But that's not something we concern ourselves with. I mean, who the best player is, is not, is not often who wins the event. It's, you know, normally it's like a sandbagger and we, and we award a big bag of dirt to that person at the end of the <laughs> event as well. So, um, but no, I'm a, I'm about a six handicap. I hit it all over the place, but I have fun. I still love the game. Jeff is a much more accomplished player. He's, he keeps it in the middle of the fairway. He's about a one or a two these days. In Not addition a, to the, the yeah, sandbagger awards, are there others that you traditionally give it after each event? Uh, I mean, uh, Jeff, you can answer that if you like. Yeah, well, well, we have a little trophy, a little Friar trophy that everybody who wins gets. But we always say that if you care about who wins at a Friars event, you're at the wrong place. Um, we have a 2020 award for people who go on 20 trips within 20 years. Wow. They get, a, they get a nice plaque, and we have a number of them. In fact, we have one of our Friars members who will be celebrating his 100th trip this year with us. Uh, wow. We'll be going on a trip with him. So there's all sorts of joke awards and, and things like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And now Donna, now Donna's vanished. Gone. Well, you know, Je uh, Jeff, if you're a one or two handicap, that sounds like it's almost getting perilously close to violating the no a-hole rule. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's be fair. I can't really play. To I can't play to it. Uh, okay. I'm getting older, and uh, my handicap actually, I I'm I'm a four now um, because I've okay. been playing all winter down here in Florida. So, um, but. It really, it doesn't. We're not. When you're on a Friars trip, you don't really care about your score. You just kind of enjoy the company. Jeff, tell tell me about the single greatest golf shot you've ever hit on a Friars trip. It's very simple. Uh, Bandon Dunes, 2021, 16th hole, Sheep Ranch. Uh, playing with my good friar friend Clayton McGrady and a couple other guys, and hit a six iron that went into the cup from 130 Ooh. yards. I was embarrassed to say that, but it was into a little bit of a breeze, and then Clayton pretty much picked me up and carried me to the green. So uh, <laughs> the problem the problem is when you make a hole in one on a friar's trip, everybody stays around at the bar afterwards to get their free drink. So that was an expensive shot for me. Oh, that's, I, that's where you go. Uh, oh, I lost my wallet. I don't have my credit card. <laughs> they they know I I have the credit card because I got the Friars credit card, so that I, I, that didn't didn't work. So that trip had about fifty people. Um, what's on the it. most memorable shot you've seen in the Friars trip? Yeah, um, there's been a lot. I mean, certainly there's some hole in one stories, but I think one that might be more entertaining um, was that our young pro championship and uh, i won't basically we we have um a collection of i think we've got 12 to 14 in the club right now that are under 30 years old that are mini tour players that are um, oh. our uh members kind of sponsor you know they are nominate to be a part of our club and we welcome them in, into the club and we we help support them but and we put on a, an event uh, once a year with a purse um that helps pay for their q school and but more importantly, it's about us interacting with them, too. You know, obviously, all of us hackers, we have somebody to root for and we kind of learn about their experience. But this was one of the first ones that I attended. And at the end, there's this kind of madcap kind of uh, shootout, I guess, or horse race type of format. And it's alternate shot. It's four players. And but we all kind of play together. So there might be 20 people on one hole or something like that. Oh, my gosh. All right. And uh, the, the shot in question I don't re I remember who hit it. Uh, his name is Elliot Reed. And I think he might have had a hunt. He was inside 150 yards from the middle of the fairway. Everybody's looking at him. He's he's a decent player. So we're, we are making fun of him. But it's not this shot was, I think, nerves and maybe scotch induced. <laughs> but uh, we called it the chunk whiff. So he he hit he hit so far behind the ball and laid this massive piece of side over. But the ball never moved. <laughs> his club never touched never touched the ball so yeah <laughs> that's that's yeah, pretty hard to do if you think about so, it sounds like too much bounce on that wedge the wedge bounced <laughs> the turf and right over the ball missing right. it 
It could have been. It was the it issue. was the wedge's fault. Definitely the wedge's fault. Yeah, it was uh, an equipment issue. Somebody yeah. call Peter Costas quick. <laughs> well, I'm looking at your schedule for this year. Here are some of the places I jotted down that were pretty interesting. Coral Ridge in Florida, which is a great golf course. Uh, you're in St. George, Utah, one of my favorite spots. It's an incredible area. The Army Navy Club, that sounds pretty good. Uh, the Best of Napa, I'm assuming that's golf courses, not wineries. Maybe it's both. Both, oh. yeah. Aaron Hills, I've played there a few times. Sand Valley, the new uh, up north place. Uh, Pete Dye Golf Club, not too far from me in West Virginia. Plainfield, which is a classic. Uh, is that Roth? I think that's Roth. It is Roth. It is Roth. Uh, and next year, you've got Vietnam, Australia, and New Zealand. And uh, later this September, you're coming back to the Greenbrier. So anybody who hasn't played any of those golf courses is in for a treat. Those, every one of those is, well, I don't know. We, I don't, yeah, I haven't been, I haven't played in Vietnam. Uh, I could ask Larry Nelson for some tips, but he was in the army in Vietnam. So I probably wouldn't help. That was a long time ago. And he, uh, he was a roving, uh, uh, roving target to draw fire so they could figure out where the North Vietnamese artillery was. And they found it in and got those guys blown up. But, his story is like incredible. That. So he didn't play a lot of golf in Vietnam. There probably wasn't a golf course there. No, but there, probably not. There were a lot of holes in the ground at that time. Yeah. So how did you get? How did you put this incredible itinerary together, guys? Well, I, I would just at the beginning, everything is a little different. Some of these are one days that you mentioned, where a member will host a group or will get a couple of friends to host a group, which is great. The Napa trip, um, we have a through our company, Buffalo Group, we have a partnership with Christy Kerr and her winery, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the focus. It's a wine trip with golf, I would say. It's for the people who really want to do a little bit of both. Um, so we're we're and, playing at Silverado, but we're also dining at you know, Thomas Keller's restaurant, and we've got some really cool and some cool experiences lined up, you know, mostly on the food and beverage side uh, for that event. But yeah, Christy was instrumental in kind of helping us put that together. Yeah, and um, and then you know the Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand. I'm calling it my first farewell tour. I mean, I love the international trips, and uh, <laughs> I told Don uh, last year that I wanted to do one more trip to Australia because it's the best golf in the world in Melbourne. And we built through a, another friar, Quan Co from Augusta, who is. Uh, runs international trips. He set up Vietnam for us and we've got 28 people with a wait list for wow. Vietnam, which is going to be really magical. Again, that's, we're going to play great golf, but we're going to also experience the culture. We're going to really dive in and, and understand the place. And then New Zealand, of course, no better country in the world. And we have a friar over there, Alistair Todd, who runs trips and he put together a magical uh, thing for us. So it's three back-to-back -back trips. If you want to do all three, and we do have a couple people doing all three, it's about five weeks, uh, but you can do one or two. So it's really flexible. We've also been, I think my favorite trip of all time was Iceland in 2017. We tried to do a trip around the summer solstice, and we went to Iceland and played at midnight over there. Golf was not, the greens were not rolling, you know, 14 on the stint meter, but I think everybody really enjoyed the, the experience despite some rough weather. So... So you're not going to get out your suntan lotion for Iceland, huh? No, no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm personally kind of holding out for the Greenland golf trail. Let me know when that. You can it up. <laughs> the uh, Don, I, I was reading about you in a in a story. You started out as a caddy, what at Sea Island, and then you went to uh, you progressed. Tell some of the tell some of your stops along the way before you reach the pinnacle of golf, which is now. <laughs> I do kind of look at this as the pinnacle of golf. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not jealous of too many people in the golf industry. I bet. My, mine's pretty good. And it's all basically thanks to this guy. Uh, I'll try to hopefully kind of keep this abridged, but yeah, I was a caddy. Um, I responded to an ad in a newspaper one day that said uh, golfers wanted $700 to a thousand, 700 to a thousand dollars a week. And I had no idea what it was, but actually, Coincidentally, the gentleman that wrote that ad is Jeff, because <laughs> he, was, he was he was the he was the president of uh, Caddy Master Enterprises at the time. So Caddy Master 
uh, you know, has contracts at Augusta National, TPC Sawgrass, Pebble Beach, Pinehurst, Whistling Straits, all the best, you know, golf resorts in the country and, and a lot of them overseas. So that's kind of how I got started in, you know, luxury golf world. Um, did four or five seasons at uh, Sea Island and went up to Whistling Straits a couple times and kind of used that to transition into the uh, hotels and resorts. So I was a golf sales manager at the Greenbrier. So uh, my, my oldest daughter was born there in West Virginia. We lived there for four years. And then I ended up at Pinehurst. So I was at Pinehurst for seven years. I was the director of sales there. So the Friars kind of remained a client of mine at both of those resorts. You know, I was trying to get them to sign contracts with me. Um, and, you know, Jeff, Jeff had built the club up in 2017. I think he did seven or eight trips and he's involved with lots of different other businesses. And he kind of came to me and said, uh, what, what do you think about this? You know, like, here, take a look at the books. I think I've kind of maxed it out for what I can do, but I think we need to, you know, we need to, we need to hire a full-time employee. And, you know, I, so we, when we had a great discussion and I kind of, you know, ironed out, like you're going to pay me to run to book, book and plan golf trips and travel all over the world and play golf with my friends. So I said, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history. I mean, I think the future is still bright. Our, you know, our club is still growing, um, but it's really, you know, uh, oh, well, we lost him. We, we lost, lost him. We we'll love the internet. Well, Bob, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Bob, well, that, yeah. approximately, is there an average number of uh, golfers who go on one of these trips? So it all depends. So the private clubs are a little smaller. The trips may be 12 to 16 people. Uh, a resort like Greenbrier, we could do 40 to 50 people. Um, the international trips are usually 16 to 20, although they can be bigger. Um, and you know, it is, we do have uh, a, a number of women members and wives are welcome on trips as well, whether they golf or they don't. Uh, we try to be as inclusive as possible and make it fun for everybody. Um, so that's, it all depends on the, on the trip, the location and the time of year. How, how many of the members tell their wives that they're actually welcome on their golf trip? <laughs> You know, it's it's very different. It, uh, this is a fascinating. I won't go too deep on this, but th our club was uh, all male for many years. So it was formed in 1994. Mm -hmm. I became a member in 1999. Took it over in 2012. Uh, we introduced women members, and uh, the culture for the generation before me was: I'm going on a guy's trip. I'll see you in in six days. Yeah. Now uh, we find more men uh, are able to go on golf trips when they can say to their wife, "We're going to the Broadmoor." By the way, you can play around a round of golf or not, and you can go to the spa and the wives come and all the wives hang out and have a great time. And they see that their guys are just really, really, really not doing anything but playing golf. <laughs> so and, and it, we help coordinate, you know, a lot of kind of cultural or fun events outside of golf. We just I just got back from Cabo with 34 people and, you know, we played four great golf courses. We we're at a beautiful resort. But really, the most fun thing we did, um, we had uh, eight couples went out for a whale watching tour, and it was oh, yeah. it was unbelievable to get. I mean, we were right on top of the humpbacks out there, so it was it was it was amazing. And we've done a lot of that kind of stuff over the years, so that's that's fun. And it makes it makes the non golfers you know feel a part of the trip, and obviously you know they want to come back and spend time with friends that they make. What's your uh, number one trip that you'd like to go on that you guys haven't been able to? land yet as a as a site uh all the best golf courses in north korea uh no just kidding um, <laughs> no we I haven't mean, yeah no I we haven't the government the head of the oh, government has just, a very just call golf. dennis rodman he, he'll yeah. get you in. <laughs> uh, i would say japan for me uh, i would love to see the golf in japan and the culture and i have not been there okay I mean, I, I book and plan most of the domestic trips and obviously there are some new resorts popping up. Um, the new band in, or not Kaiser resorts in Colorado, uh, I think will open up next year. So there's always something like that on the horizon. But I think, you know, Jeff kind of nailed it as, you know, the, the real horizon for us is, you know, international destinations. And I think another one that we will cross off the list the next couple of years um, is Argentina. There's some oh, you know, yeah. fantastic wine and food and, actually a very strong golf culture down there. I mean, just look at the, uh, yes. the professionals that have come through Argentina. So 
uh, that would be a fun trip. Well, I you remember the, the Shell's wonderful world of golf with uh, Roberto Di Vincenzo, and I can't right. remember who he was playing at whatever the most famous golf club in Argentina was at the time. And, and the Jockey just, Club, yeah. There you go. Yes, thank you very much. Alistair McKenzie, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this year's schedule, I, Sand Valley was on there. Is that uh, include the around at the Lido, the the course that Kaiser had recreated, the legendary mythical course? It does. Um, so we've gone Bandon and Sand Valley. We kind of do in off years, and we do them in May over the PGA Championship. Is kind of what we've done the last uh, six years, and they and. The Bandon trip is a little bigger. It's more like 48 or 52 players, and uh, Sand Valley is normally more like 28 to 32. But uh, they're both spectacular. Just they're, they're just they're run almost perfectly. All the logistics uh, are great. The food and beverage is really high end. It's they just do a great job of. They keep everything pretty simple. It's not it's not overly luxurious, but you don't really need that on a golf trip. But you're comfortable, and the golf is. You know, it's set up to just play golf all day, basically. And the Lido course obviously uh, drew a lot of interest. Uh, we're going to be, we'll be playing it in just a couple of weeks. So looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, we all owe a great debt of gratitude to Mike Kaiser. And I, th I think the whole golf industry um, has been reshaped by him. And if I had a chance to have dinner with one person, I would love to, I would love to pick his brain because he it was, what he did was amazing. Gary, you know what it's time for? Uh, what, bar time? Oh, no, it's time for the shameless plug. Yes. <laughs> subscribe now, it's free. Click on like, help us out, subscribe. You'll just get alerted when the next show drops. And uh, who knows what will be on the next one. Next time, it could be the inside scurrilous details of the Friars Club, the latest trip <laughs> to the Army-Navy Club. Who knows what might happen there? <laughs> what was well, the, uh, if you had one, if you each had one place you'd like to go back to tomorrow, just because you loved it, what would, what would it be? I'll go a very easy question. Answer Cabot links been there three times. We we're going this summer. I'm not going to be on that trip, but I could, uh, you could just plop me down there and let me be there for a week. And I would, it's just a magical place. Very well done. I'm trying, yeah, I mean, there's so many, so many good ones. Um, I think St. Andrews. I've, I've been lucky. Um, the last two years, I've spent a little, about a week and a half in St. Andrews each summer, and it's, you know, it's really grown on me. But to be there with, with some friar friends and kind of, you know, we went out on the East Lothian side. Half our trip was over there, you know, Muirfield and uh north barrack or just it was just some spectacular golf and just yeah. golf as it's meant to be i guess but just very simple but just it was a blast a lot of fun well i want to thank both of you for joining us if we go too much farther everything explodes not that it didn't already <laughs> one or two times anyway but we do what we can and uh yeah i think we already broke people. the internet with those blackouts we had so, I think so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so Apparently our high-tech so equipment's just too much for the internet. <laughs> Where can people find you? Is it the friars.com or what is the? Correct. Yeah. The friars.com. Um, we're on Instagram with uh, at the friars golf club. Okay. Um, and we've got, so, you know, constantly posting there. We're also on Facebook as well at friars golf club. Great. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Gary, Sounds thanks like for your great fun. Season. There's going to be a lot of guys hearing and women watching this going, geez, I, I, I want in this. It sounds yeah. like a great deal. You may have to raise the entry fee again. <laughs> they're, all, uh, they're all welcome. 